This back here is the GVM Pro SD300B, and it is a 300 watt bicolor light that can get you a more professional piece of gear while saving a few bucks compared to the other big names out there. I'm pretty sure you know the ones. It has a pretty large color range from 2700 Kelvin to 6800, and it is really bright. It comes with a pretty cool app, and there's just a bunch of stuff going on, but we'll talk about that all later. So you might know GVM is a pretty budget option for video lights and accessories. Now, budget doesn't always mean bad per se. I shot my short film Talk to Text on a main overhead light that was a $30 newer light with the included orange filter, so I'm no stranger to a good budget light. However, these cheaper options definitely are missing a little bit of something in the light quality and build quality departments compared to the more premium options. That is where this bad boy comes in. GVM have really stepped up the build quality with this light and just everything. But is it gonna hold up to the higher quality aperture and nan light stuff? Well, no. Well, actually, yeah, kind of, well, it really just depends on what you're looking for, honestly. And well, when you look at the price, it kind of becomes harder to argue that this is directly trying to compete with them more like it's going to be giving these features and form factor and quality to people who might be a little bit more on a budget because this light is half or even a third the price of some of the competitors. So if it turns out to be any good, well, this light is actually really impressive. So anyway, let's get on to it. When it comes to functionality, I really can't complain. I mean, we got obviously power button, four buttons, a mode which selects between the normal color matching effects and stuff. The menu, which goes into the more complex menus, back, well, it goes back to the last page, and a cool button, which I couldn't quite figure out at first, but it's supposed to like super cool your light if it ever gets hot, maybe right before you put it away, or, you know, maybe you're gonna cool it and then turn the fan off when you roll the camera for really good sound quality. I don't know. I just kind of left the light on the smart cooling option and forgot about it, which worked just fine. Of course, there is a place for your power input and the cable, by the way, is like really high quality. And then your DMX options right before, which I don't understand and never will. <laughs> I'll never use it, so. But it's there, it's there. Of course, it's fitted with a standard Bowens mount. They gave me a soft box, which we're gonna look at a little bit later, but you can put any Bowens mount stuff on there. And there's other accessories too, like getting a V-mount plate, which is sold separately, but you can do it if you want to. The design is notable. I mean, it's got the, let's see, the red and the glowing GVM logo, which I think is cool. It's a little cheesy. I don't know if it's more cheesy or more cool, so. I'm gonna say it's a tie. It's cheesy and it's cool. You can be cheesy and cool. But yeah, what do you guys think? I, I don't know. I can see some more serious sets like taping over that and it might be good to have a setting in the menu to turn it off. I, maybe there is, but I didn't see it. Um, but hey, it is what it is. I don't think it's a big deal. I just wanted to note that like, yeah, that logo is glowing, <laughs> so. Before we go directly into the menus and the app and other things like that, um, let's talk about the light itself. So when it comes to the light this thing puts out, the biggest features here are of course, the power of it. It's a very decent 300 watt light, but it also is by color, which is insane for this price point. This is usually the price you see like just daylight balance lights at. They actually have an entire range of the series, two, 300, four, 500, and a 650 watt versions. While more powerful lights are nice, I think when I look at the price and the output, this might be the best starting point for most people. I think 200 is a little low. I think 650 is like obviously really bright and the jump from 300 to 400 price wise is kind of steep. I mean, it's still budget for sure, but I think the best value is this 300, personally. I use mostly 300 watt and lower lights, personally. Of course, that's me shooting on the GH6 with its DR boost of 2000 ISO and the S5 II with a high ISO of 4000. So even if the output is lacking in like 150 watt light, I can still make it work pretty well. I was actually able to shoot a short film with this light and the ability to blast light in through a basement window and just bounce it off the floor for our lighting for pretty much the entire scene was actually really, really helpful. I also wanna say I love that this light can go as low as not 1%, but 0.1%, which 
you never know when that's gonna be useful. So the output's good, but I wanted to see if there was any significant color shift or loss of brightness when using the bicolor features on this light. So accessing the S52's spot meter feature, I was able to pretty accurately monitor the exposure with a gray card. So basically anything under 4,000 Kelvin definitely does lose some exposure. Um, you could lose anywhere from like a half of a stop, maybe two thirds of a stop, maybe a little more than two thirds of a stop, but I mean, it's never more than a stop. Let me get that out of there. So yeah, does this affect me? Maybe a little bit, something to keep in mind in the background, but honestly, you really just have to know that 4,000 Kelvin and higher is gonna be the most output that this light is in, which is great because a lot of lights, it's in the middle and then on the edges it drops off, but it seems like 4,000 to max 6800 is the best you're gonna do and like 2700 is gonna be a little darker. This is a pretty common thing with bicolor LEDs, not a huge deal for me personally, just keep an eye on your exposure and keep in mind that 4000 Kelvin and higher is gonna be your maximum output if that's something that matters. I also wanted to see how consistent the color temperature was, so I tested it at 68, 46, and 2700 and all three values I tested started in a good spot and got just a little bit cooler as I dimmed the light. So pretty negligible, but that's what the app said. Also 6800 and 2700 appeared to have a tiny bit of green, 27 a little bit more, but 4600 in the middle had a magenta shift. So curious, but again, not something I'm sure I would ever notice even using scopes unless I was really, really picky about a certain shot. So with the exposure shifts, maybe I would notice it, but the color shifts, I promise I personally would never notice this stuff in the real world. And I think this is more or less in line with lights like this, although I'm sure a lot more expensive lights have slightly stronger tolerances for this sort of thing. So the actual usability of this light is actually really great. Something I always hated about my NAND lights, for example, was when I scrolled through the effects, the effects would automatically start going, which at best someone's gonna think your light's broken or at worst maybe you're gonna give someone a seizure so obviously that's a little bit hyperbolic but you know turning your light on trying to touch the brightness and touching the effects is really annoying and can make you look kind of bad at a corporate gig where when the bad bulb effect goes off making you look like you get a, a broken light on the gvm when you go into something like the effects tab or the source matching tab where you can set it to like candle or whatever um, when you go through those effects, you see what the effect are. It has its name and icon, but it doesn't actually do the effect until you select it. And all those effects are editable too, which is really cool. So the menus are also pretty deep, so I won't get into all of it, but it's really fantastic to control everything down to the speed and style of the controls with like a linear or logarithmic curves for the dials, which I have never seen before. Oh, and the app is pretty great too. I've reviewed stuff that has apps before and it's a little hit and miss, but once they start working, um, they do work pretty well, but this has probably been the fastest time to just get the app up and running. Scan the QR code, download the app, it shows your light right away and it goes to town, which is pretty cool. I've never had a such a seamless experience with an app before. By the way, they did send me their softbox and I wasn't really sure if I would have something to say about it, but one of the first things I noticed was the number of arms which actually tell you the optimal way to open this thing up because I've used unmarked ones before and trying to pry those things open make you just feel like a total idiot. So it also actually has three additional layers of diffusion and things like that you can apply. The first is an internal layer that has a solid output while softening the light up a little bit, it's a little middle ground between a true softbox it's Velcro, which is a lot better than if you had one with buttons, which takes a billion years to put up. And yeah, it helps the quality of light just a little bit. The second layer is another Velcro diffusion that goes around the entire opening, which can be used by itself or in combination with the first one. It makes the quality of light really, really nice. But of course, it's gonna cut down on your output a bit, which is why you want a light as strong as a 300 watt or potentially more sometimes. And the final one is a grid, which if you've never used a honeycomb lighting grid before, it really does cut down on the ambient light spill from your softbox and can be super useful for certain things. So having all these options to mix and match in one softbox in a relatively kind of short package once it's all put together, it's a pretty nice light modifier. So if you don't have a softbox or something similar, it might be worth picking up. I don't know, up to you. It sent me a light stand too, but I lost it, unfortunately. It was really nice, so I hope I can find it. Um, 
that's that's what in life you know you just leave stuff every couple weeks and never see it again but hopefully I, I find it anyway final thoughts on this light there's definitely a pretty high bar for this light to cross I shoot corporate clients as well as like features shorts music videos and that means there's aperture lights all over the place I rent them out all the time and I've got a pretty good collection of NAND lights that I got on sale which is the only reason I have them because they're kind of expensive um, they're also good don't get me wrong but previously I kind of just thought of GVM being in a completely different class but with this series of pro SD lights I think I would happily add them to my kit as a great bicolor option, which I'm kind of lacking right now. These might not be beating the likes of Aperture, but they do things really close, really well. And some things I even prefer over my NAND lights like we talked about earlier. I was really a little bit nervous about this review at first because I only want to present products and companies that are helping offer new or lower price options to budget filmmakers and GVM continued to be one of those companies and I'm really happy to say that I was pleasantly surprised by this light and the quality of light, the quality of the build and the features that it offered that really do match up pretty well with some of the more higher end prosumer lights that I've used in the past. So I gotta, I gotta hand it to them. They did a great job and I think this light is a pretty great option if you can't quite swing like a thousand dollars for the equivalent aperture light. I think there's not a ton that those lights can do that this light can't for a solo filmmaker. If you're on a bigger set or, you know, something along those lines, your mileage may vary. But for me, for short projects, for things where I'm bringing my own kit instead of renting something out, this is pretty fantastic. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy. GVM did send me this light, but they didn't ask me to say anything particular about it. And uh, I very strongly encourage you guys to check this thing out and let me know what you think down in the comments. So thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know if you want to see more videos on like cinematography breakdowns or how I light scenes or maybe wedding films or corporate videos or anything along those lines. Be happy to chat about any of that stuff. So um, that about do it. All right.